So I'm going to create a new project now. And in this case, I'm going to call it uh, Water Cycle because that's what I've chosen as my theme. So I want to browse for the folder, and that folder is going to be on my desktop. And it's going to be this folder here, which I've called Water Cycle. Uh, in the Water Cycle folder, I've already put in my selected video clips. I've got a whole group of them in a raw folder. I, I selected them and edited them and put a number in front of them to order them. And then I selected the best ones and put it here. So I've got nine images that I'm going to use. You can use, I think, between five and ten. I've got a selection of music, which you'll also have to do. And I have another separate folder for sound effects because I went beyond just adding music to it. I actually found sound of water because it's about water cycles. So I've got rain sounds, and I've got uh, river sounds, and I've got creek sounds and waterfall sounds. So you can do that too if you want. It's a little more extensive, but you know, it's it's good experience for getting ready for the course project. All right, so let's come back here to our project. I've got this water cycle. I know where it's going to be. Again, I don't need to worry about any of this. And if you know you do not have a graphics card chipset, you might find it actually saves you some pain and agony by switching to software only, which Premiere will not even look for a graphics card chipset. It could help prevent crashes if it starts to crash or it chokes or it takes hours for you to render something. You might want to check that you do or do not have a graphics card. The rest of these things we don't have to change, just like the last time. You'll never have to change them in this course. So I'm just going to say OK, and I'm in Premiere. And the first thing I need to do is import all our footage. So I could come up here to File, Import. Uh, but, of course, I like keyboard shortcuts a lot. They really save me a lot of time. So normally I'll just use Command-I. So now I'm going to look for it. This is my mellow yellow crop. I don't want that. I want my water cycle. Here are all the ones that I want to bring in. Notice it's already created a water cycle uh, project in this folder. You will never send this to me because I can't open it. There's no way I can actually use it because it will all be pointing directly to your desktop. So here are all of the ones I'm going to uh, import, the nine plus the music. I import those. And here's everything. So notice I've got 01 clouds through 09 ocean in order. That's kind of nice that they're numbered and they come in that way. And then there's the music at the end, and you can see the icon indicates that it's just sound. Now, these are longer clips. And I've only got 20 seconds. So I've got to decide what I'm going to use and where I'm going to start. Well, I already know I want to start with clouds because that's how water cycles typically start. So I'm going to double click on this. And notice there's no audio that goes with this. There's no highlight on the audio. So it's just clouds. So I want to either play this. I can click on here to play through it and watch my clouds. Or I could just drag the playhead through and try to find something. And I like this right here where the clouds are starting to get menacing because they don't have a lot of time that I can spend with this. So what I want to do is I want to set my end point here, and I can do that by clicking this to mark the end, or I can press I for in on my keyboard. So I'll just do this now so you can see it. And then I can see this about four seconds in. And how much time do I want to spend on this? Well, I probably don't want to spend really three seconds on it, but I'll make it a little long so I have some options here to see what I want to do with it. So let's say I'm going to make it about three seconds long, somewhere along about there, and I'll click here, or I can press O for out. Now I can actually watch this. I don't you notice it highlights the selection, but I can just go play this. I'm going to press my space bar and play it through. So the clouds are kind of building, and that's where I think I'm going to start. Yeah, I think that's really a little long, and I think probably I want to start a little sooner, so I'm just going to drag the endpoint in here a little bit, and I'm not going to care about this for right now. So this is fine. I can either grab this right here for video only, or I can put my cursor inside, and when I click and hold down, it changes to a little hand, and then I'll drag that down over here into the timeline somewhere, and the timeline shows up puts all of this thing in there, and there's my first clip, and it's in video track one. 
Now that looks really tiny. That's going to be hard to see. So I'm going to adjust my zoom here. So now I can see it. Now I can't, there's my 20 second. So I could even zoom in here even further if I want to have more detail. But let's just leave this here to give it a sense of how much I have to put in here. Great. I've got one shot. Let's see what that looks like. There's my playback head, and I can see it. what's going to be right up here. I can press play, and there it is. I kind of like this right about there as that's starting to do its little thing. I'm going to do a fade in at the beginning, and I'm probably going to get to right about there. And I'm just going to say that's where I want it to be, maybe the midpoint of a dissolve. Remember, we're going to be using transitions. We're going to be doing dissolves in this. So I'm going to just drag the end just like I did uh, in module one, and that's going to be the end of that scene and the beginning of the next. Actually, this is going to be the center point of a dissolve. Now, and remember the sequence is all of the clips that are in the timeline. It changes it to the name of the very first image that was dragged in. Well, that's just going to cause me problems later. So I'm just going to double click on this, and I'm going to change this to water cycle. So this is the name that's going to show up when I actually export. And that's kind of handy. If I wanted to make sure that I knew this was mine, I could put my initials on it, or I could do my first name. So let's just call it Water Cycle Bill. All right. So now I need my second shot. Fortunately, I've numbered them already. So I'm just going to double click on this. And you can see here, there is no audio for this one. These three, four have audio. But I'm just going to double click this one. And this is a crane up of an old castle as it starts to rain. And I can go through here like this. And I kind of like this, this vertical movement right about in there. And those clouds are starting to sweep in across the hill on the way. So let's say this is where I really want it. Now, again, I want you to watch this space right about here. I'm going to back this up and I'm going to play it by hitting space. And then I'm going to set the endpoint by pressing the I key as I play it. Right about there is where I want it to be, and the out will be right about there. Now, it looks pretty long to me. I don't know how long that is because I didn't pay any attention. But this says this is seven seconds, and this says this is four seconds. So we're roughly in the three-second area. So again, I'm going to grab here, select, and I'm going to bring this down into here. Now let's look at this with just straight cuts. I'm going to put my playhead partially through here, and I'm going to press the space bar. And I think it, you know, that that seems like it's it's coming in a little early, maybe. But we'll just leave that for now because I'll, I can fix this a little bit later. Now this loss also looks like it might be, you know, we'll just extend, extend that just a little bit. Now remember, we want transitions in here. So I'm just going to put a transition right now. Now over here in the project panel, I can see the project that I'm working on, Water Cycle. Ignore media browser and libraries and info that really are irrelevant for us in this course. But I can select effects. Again, if you can't see effects because everything is over here, let's say you've moved this all over like that and you can't see effects, click on the double arrow, come down here to effects, and it'll show you your, your effects in the project panel. I want video transitions. Remember, I want dissolve. And then my default happens to be a film dissolve. Yours might be cross dissolve. It doesn't make all that much difference. Um, but I think you'll like film dissolves better. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to drag it. Notice I got a little hand. And notice there's an international no sign here. I can't drop it there. But I can take it right here across this transition, this cut. And notice it highlights evenly on both sides. And it shows me a little uh, dissolve transition icon. And when I let go, there's my film dissolve in there. And this is my default length. Default length should be um, about one second. In this case, because this video is 25 frames per second, uh, one, uh, it's a 105 is the length of the dissolve. Now I can double click on this dissolve and I can see what the transition length is. That's one second, five frames. That is to say, one second is 20, at 25 frames per second is 25 frames, plus five is 30. So it's trying to give me a 30 frame dissolve 
I'm going to tell it I want just exactly a one second dissolve because, well, because I can. And now that's there. And let's just play it. I'm going to hit the space bar and watch over here in the, the uh, playback window. Fade out, fade in. Okay, let's look at that again. And I think, you know, I might have been wrong. This probably needs a longer dissolve. So I'm going to double click on this. And instead of one second, I'm going to say 115. 15 frames is uh, half of 30. So that's roughly a second and a half. And if you can see it, I didn't actually use a colon there. The colon is part of the official SMPTE SMPTE timecode format, but semicolon is easier. I don't have to hit shift key or anything, so that works fine. And notice this is expanded, so let's take a look at that. That feels just a little bit better. It might even be able to go longer. Let's just put in two seconds. And then look at it. Oh, I like that much better. Okay. Now I want to put a fade in on this. And a fade is really just half of a dissolve. So there is no fade. You don't want to go to find a fade anywhere. Just use your dissolve and drag that over. And this will be the default length. And I know I want this to be shorter. I don't want it to take a second to get in there. I want it to be just like, let's say, 15 frames. Go all the way back to the beginning. Notice it fades in from black pretty quick. And there's my smooth dissolve to the storm brewing. And somewhere in here, I'm going to then uh, go to the first bit of rain. So let's go back. Notice I can't see my project panel here. It's media browser. Well, it's over here on the left. If I just click to the left, that'll show back up. So the next thing I want, and notice this four, five, and three, rain is down here for some reason. I'm not sure why. But I'm going to double click on this. And notice it comes with audio. And I don't know if you can hear it, but I'm going to play it anyway. You might be able to hear raindrops. What I'm interested in is interesting shots of rain beginning. And I like this little first big bump of rain right there. And I know that I want that to be visible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move back just a little bit because I know this is going to be a dissolve. And that's where I'm going to say my endpoint, which would be the center of my dissolve. And that gives me some more rain and a little bubble floating through there. And I think maybe there will be a nice out to start. And uh, I'm going to bring all of it down because it does have audio that goes with it. And I'm going to bring all of this down. And notice when I put the video in the right place, the audio comes. And you can see the audio is really very, very faint. There's probably not much uh, volume going on there. We'll talk about changing the volume here in, in a little bit. And I'm going to put another dissolve in here just so I can see what that looks like. I'm going to use whatever the default comes in just so I can see it. And here we go again. Yeah, so there, that's, that's some pretty nice rain just starting. And I don't need it much longer than that because I'm really going to expand this. Now I'm going to go up to four, bring that in. Let's see. Now this has multiple shots in it. You can see some of the rain coming down here, but it's a little harder to see when you're playing it. But boy, that's really loud. So uh, we'll fix that a little bit later. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scro scroll through here because I don't want these trees. That's what I want right there. The, the, the heavy rain in the puddles. And maybe there is a good place to end. And in this case, I uh, will bring both of them down because I want to play with the audio here a little bit. So I'm going to grab this, bring that down. Notice it's a little bit longer than this one. And let's hear what happens with the audio. Oh my, that's really loud. So what I need to do is I want to bring the volume way down on this. Uh, I could bring the volume up on this, but I've got some sound effects I'll add. Let's just see how easy it is to edit audio in Premiere. Now, I can't see much here because uh, it's so small. But what I can do is I can adjust this vertical zoom here. 
And now I can see my waveform and I can see the volume. And of course, I can see how loud it is over here in the audio track. This white line that runs through the middle, this is the left track and this is the right track. You can see left and right right here because stereo, stereo rain, I guess. Uh, but this white line that runs through it is called a rubber band. And this rubber band is the volume level. Right now it's set for normal, normal loudness, which is also known as zero dB. dB stands for decibel. We'll talk about that more later in the course. But I can grab this line and I can move it up or down. Now I've grabbed the one in uh, the first frame and uh, I've raised this as loud as I can possibly go, which is six decibels. Now, three decibels is twice as loud. Six decibels is four times as loud. It also works the other way. So when I take this one and bring it down this way, uh, I'm down about nine decibels, which is roughly uh, eight times softer. I know this is really loud, so let me just take it down to like 16. Well, let's see what that bounce up to. Drag it down to 16 and just see how loud that seems to be. Well, that you can see over here, that's still pretty doggone loud. So I'm going to take this way down. Now, I can take it all the way down to minus infinity, which means totally silent. But let me bring it up here to, I don't know, 24, something like that. And when I put something else in here, that'll, that'll kind of balance in. And I can actually fade it in uh, as it goes. And I probably want to fade in the sound effects. Uh, across the dissolve that I'm going to put in here, but we won't go into that today. So let me get my dissolve, drag that over. It snaps into place. Let's just look and see how that goes. We'll add sound effects and music to this. And that's probably too long, so that's, that's long enough right about there. And this is a start. It'll go beyond, beyond 20, and then I'll start trimming this even more. Now, uh, we've got about 10 minutes left. Uh, so what I want to do now is then put music in here. What I can do is I can just reduce this and zoom back out to make it smaller so I can make sure I see my track. And I'm going to go back over here to my project panel and I'm going to look for my music, which is right here. Uh, and I'm not going to drag that in here because it's pretty long. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click it in here and now I can see my waveform. So if I start at the very beginning, there's, there's not much to start. Just some little chimes. Now it's going to start adding more instruments and getting louder. So it kind of, it kind of has that, that uh, sound of uh, rain. But let's suppose I come right here to where the music changes again. Oh, see, there's a storm brewing there. So now let's back this up. Let's see what let's see what this big spike is here. I don't know that I like that all that much. Let's go. Let's go see what happens here. So I know I've got something that's about five seconds long. So this little storm thing starts in right about there, which it says is 147 in. If I back up to 142, this is all just, just simple, basic math to kind of guess where I want it. So let's say maybe that's my start, about 141. Right about there, I'm going to make my endpoint, and that's 141, so it'll be like 201. And we'll just make it a little bit longer here, just because I can, and we'll just say that's the out point. Now, I only want to drag down the music, so I'm going to bring this down over here to the very beginning. And there's, there's that. And uh, let's go all the way back to the beginning, and notice that the music starts really hard. So I want to fade my music in. Here's where it gets fun to edit audio. 
I'm going to drag that open a little bit, bring this up so I can see it. And I want to fade in the music so it it's faded in fully by like about here. Here, here's my rubber band. The music is about as loud as I want it to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this piece of music so it's highlighted. And then I'm going to come over here. Notice this is audio track two. And I'm going to add a keyframe. There's the keyframe. Nothing has changed. That just says at that point, that's what the volume is going to be. Now I'm going to come all the way over here to the beginning. I'm going to add another keyframe, clicking here. There's another keyframe that says exactly what the volume is going to be. It's still, still exactly the same, but I'm going to take this keyframe at the beginning. And I'm going to drag it all the way down to the bottom, minus infinity. And now it's silent and it's going to fade up. Here's that sound. And now what I will continue to do is add shots, add dissolves. I'm going to eventually build creeks and rivers and waterfalls. Probably is already too long. I'm going to end up having to change some of these lengths, which is pretty easy to do. I'll just come in here and I'll just shift them around. And, and it's good practice to be able to do that. These are all of the things that you'll do for the course project.